everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another new video. Real quick bit of housekeeping before this video starts. I've got a new channel on uh, Odyssey. This is a, like, third-party sort of... Not third-party, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of YouTube. It's very easy to set up. It automatically syncs all my YouTube videos. I had a couple of people asking. Uh, and if you're into this um, service as an alternative to YouTube, uh, it seems cool. I haven't looked into it too much yet, but if you're a fan of this platform, rather than YouTube, feel free to head over there. I promise I won't be mad. I mean, technically my YouTube channel still isn't even monetizable. So uh, just want to let people know about that. Uh, what are we talking about today? A while back, I made a video talking about using Polybar with the awesome window manager. Uh, and I think people liked that video for the most part. Uh, but uh, there were a whole, whole lot of comments mentioning that when you're using Polybar, there's no built-in way to maintain the tag list. Uh, functionality with the awesome window manager. I think built into Polybar, it supports PSPWM and uh, i3 out of the box. Um, now, I personally didn't really have a problem with that in the video. Uh, you can use the keyboard shortcuts super one, two, three, four, five, and through nine uh, to switch to the different uh, desktops or tags or modes. They're, they're called different things in every window manager, I feel like. Uh, but I, I, I have sort of been uh, scratching my head trying to figure out a way to do that. And I've got uh, what at least is a half step in the right direction here. Uh, you can see here I've got some buttons up at the top. And if I push them, I am switching to different desktops. And uh, so we're there. It's working. It's not perfect. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, first thing I should probably do is let me uh, break my um, awesome config here real quick. So let's uh, go into my, my awesome config. So go into the config for awesome. And let's just uh, like rename RC Lua to RCC Lua. And then if I reload the window manager, ideally we'll be breaking in here. Cool. So it looks wacky as hell. Uh, but what you'll notice is that if we click these different tags up here, we are switching between the different tags here. So that's the functionality we're trying to create. There's some other things here, like it automatically highlights what tag you're on and stuff like that. We're not gonna get that far in this video. Uh, I think in order to do that, you'd have to write uh, a Lua script that can work with Awesome Window Manager. That's not what we're doing here. I'm not opposed to doing that. I just don't really have the time or the know how to do it right now. So take a big, big time investment, uh, but I, I, I very well might end up doing that later. Uh, for now, we're gonna stick with what I've done here. So let's uh, go ahead and fix the config real quick. And cool, cool, cool. All right, we're back in business here. So uh, let's talk about what we're gonna do here. Uh, there were a couple of different ways we could tackle this, uh, but the idea that I got stuck in my head was Maybe the easiest way to do this would be to build an independent polybar module uh, that would basically trigger a keyboard shortcut. As I mentioned earlier, we can use Super 1 through 9 to switch between the different desktops. Uh, and so I figured if we just build a module that will trigger a keyboard shortcut when we push a button up here, that'd be the way to do it. Uh, and that's actually what I ended up doing here. Uh, again, not like probably not the best way to do it. Be sure to look on the comments for this video because I feel like this is going to be one of those where somebody is going to right off the bat have a better idea in the comments section. We'll, we'll look at that when we get there. For now, this is the solution I've got. It's going to be up on GitHub so you can recreate this in your own config really easily if you want to. So uh, the main thing that's going to make this work is a little tool called xdo tool. Uh, this is a command line program that does exactly what we need it to do. It, can, it triggers a keyboard shortcut through the command line. Uh, so assuming you're on Arch and you need to install it, you can do sudo pack command dash x x do tool uh you know if you're on ubuntu it should be sudo app get or apt install x do tool something like that uh you know it's a package manager i'm sure you know how to work it if you're that far in here so uh the way the x do tool works is uh you can run the command uh, and we'll say uh x do tool uh, and it, there's a couple of different things it can do. It can work with mouse events and clicks and things. But uh, what we're going to do for our purposes is we're going to type in key uh, and then we just give it a key to press. So if I were to, for example, let's just say when I hit this, you're going to hit the L key. You can see it'll literally just print the L key. Let's make this a little bit more what we're looking for here. Again, the keyboard shortcuts are the super one, two, three through nine. There is another handy little tool you can use, uh, XEV. So when we run XEV, uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up a little viewer here and it's gonna register mouse clicks and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the key that we need here. In that case, this is the, the Windows button, the super key, the, the command button on Mac. Uh, I hit that. I'm gonna go ahead and come over to the terminal. 
And right up here uh, in this key release event here, what you can see is you look for this section here that says key code 133 key SM. And right down here, it's telling us the value for that key. Uh, super left, the left super. We probably already knew that, but this is exactly how we're going to want to format the input uh, for the xdo tool command. It's a handy little tool I found while I was working on this. I thought I'd share it. Let's give this another shot here. I'm going to do xdo tool key, and then I'm going to give it the key. I'm going to say super underscore L plus. Uh, we'll say two. So we're on tag one now. When I run this, we should switch to tag two. There we go. Uh, and then one other thing we can add here is I'm going to do x do tool and we'll just run the exact same thing again. But right here in the middle, I'm going to give it the option uh, clear modifiers. And that's just going to make sure that in case like caps lock is hit or something like that, uh, it'll still work properly. Let's go ahead and move on over into Polybar and we can uh, build a module to do this. So we're going to go into the config for Polybar, just the main standard config file. This ended up being slightly sloppier than I wanted it to be, uh, but I'm going to come down to the bottom here and we'll create a new module. I'm going to call this, uh, let's say like uh, awesome window manager uh, tag switcher, something to that effect. And then we can start to define a new module. Uh, we're going to create a new module here. So we'll type in module slash, I'm going to call this one one. Go ahead and close that. Uh, and then we're going to come down type equals custom slash script. Uh, and then this is where it gets a little weird. The syntax here seems confusing to me and I was getting hung up on it for a while. But what I figured out is uh, you're going to do the execute command here in the module. And what we're going to use that to do is just echo out um, a bit of text. So we'll say one. And then what we have to do is there's a get polybar to trigger a click. Um, modules by default in polybar don't really register mouse clicks. So we have to tell it to, or at least not modules in this sense. Um, you just have to tell it to be waiting for a click. So what you can do is do click dash left equals. And then here we can go ahead and run our command. So we're going to do x do tool key, uh, clear modifiers, and then we will run super underscore L plus uh, one and close the quotes there. So in theory, what we should have now is a module that on press uh, will trigger the keyboard shortcut super one. So in order to actually activate the module, we're going to come up to the module section up here at the top of the config where you line up all your other modules that are going to be on the bar. Uh, and I'm going to just throw it right in the center here. I'm going to type in one here. Now we have a one right up here at the top. Very nice. Uh, and so if we switch over to the second tag here, if I click this bad boy, we're going to go right back to the first one. Uh, so I think you might sort of be able to tell where we're going with this. And this is where it honestly gets quite sloppy. What I'm going to do is essentially just create eight more modules. These are nine separate modules that I put down in the bottom of my config. I kept them super lightweight, so they're not taking up a lot of room or anything. Uh, but yeah, it's it's sort of just the, the best way I could find to do this. Uh, I actually am convinced that there's probably a way to contain this all into one module, even if we had to write a little bash script to do it. And I'm going to look into that. But for now, this is what we've got. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and you could make, you know, uh, eight more copies of this uh, and, and and you're all set. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste here because I already did it and I, I don't like uh, typing, even if I am in Vim and it's going to make my life a lot easier there. I'm just going to sort of cheat a bit. And like I said, this is going to be in a separate GitHub repo. So you can feel free to copy and paste. Uh, the one other thing that I did do here is uh, originally I just sort of had all the numbers up there. So like you hit one, you hit two. Uh, the way you change that is just whatever's here in this execute echo part, uh, you can put literally whatever you want. So if you're looking for like a symbol, uh, what I did was I just opened up the gnome character map app, uh, that's GU char map, and just found uh, a nice little icon to throw in there. It's a sort of like hollow circle. Uh, and that's it. So uh, I, this, I think, is like, like I said, sort of a half step in the right direction. I want to do better and we'll probably revisit this. But uh, for now, this is tag switching with Polybar inside of the Awesome Window Manager. Now, uh, all the things that people say about using Polybar with the Awesome Window Manager as like, why would you replace the default bar when you can just customize the bar that's already there? Yeah, that's that's all still kind of true. But uh, hey, mission accomplished, sort of. One other weird thing I should probably mention is that uh, I think by default, the uh, the monitor that you use the bar on is actually pretty important. Uh, so like, I think usually what I did with the monitor settings in Polybar is I do one of two things. 
I either have it display on all three monitors, I only have it display on the primary monitor. Uh, by the way, if you just want it to display on the primary monitor, you can just type in monitor equals, and that should by default just stick it on the primary monitor no matter what that is. So you don't have to like come up here and define a specific monitor. I actually don't need that line of code anymore. Uh, but what I did end up doing was just throwing it on all three displays. I've got three displays in front of me, and I think that's probably the best way to go. Um, it does work on all three, so it's whatever uh, monitor you're on, it's going to register the mouse click on that monitor as long as like that's focused, which clicking on the icon will focus it on that monitor to begin with. So it's actually pretty seamless. Um, so the way you can do that really quickly is uh, type in this here, uh, monitor dollar sign ENV colon monitor. Uh, and then what you can do is I did not write this code. Uh, I just found it online. Uh, but if you go into your launch shell script, uh, all of this right here, will make sure that the monitor automatically displays on all of the uh, monitors that you have open. Uh, but hey, that is it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, don't forget about the uh, the new channel over on uh, Odyssey here, if that's something you're into. If you're looking for a VPN, still got that affiliate deal with Pure VPN. They haven't knocked me off of it yet. Um, seems like a decent, like, safe option. I really, I'm not the biggest fan of VPNs to begin with, uh, but... It seems like a totally feasible tool that people would want to use. I don't really have much of a use for one, uh, but if you're in the market for one, uh, as far as I can tell, pure VPN seems to be like a good safe option. That's really the main thing with VPNs, I think, right? Is you, uh, it doesn't really do any good to throw your internet traffic somewhere else if they're just going to throw it back to whoever's trying to get your internet traffic to begin with. Not that I think the majority of people have that big of security concerns to begin, I don't know. It's weird. If you're looking for a VPN, pure VPN, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.